Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and today we're controlling a small servo and a big servo using a Raspberry Pi. Servos are an immensely useful way to turn electrical energy into a rotational or linear motion with high efficiency and with great precision. The servos in this video are all standard rotary actuated servos that can rotate 180 degrees or 270 degrees. The code supplied here will work with most rotary actuator servos and can be adjusted to maximize the effectiveness of the result. It is worth noting there are also similar looking continuous rotation servos. Much as their name implies, these servos can spin continuously and are controlled by a Raspberry Pi differently, with control over the speed and direction instead of position. The Raspberry Pi has enough current output to control at least two small 9 gram servos directly. When you start controlling bigger and many servos, they will have a higher current demand than the GPIO pins can supply. So an outside power source will be required for those situations. This guide will be split into two sections, running a small servo and running a large servo. If you're gonna control a whole bunch of servos, check out the Raspberry Pi hat from Adafruit that will let you control up to 16 really easily. Now with that, let's start by controlling this small servo. On the table before me is everything you need to make this work. A small servo. Here I have the MakeBlock 9 gram micro servo with a 180 degree range. A micro SD card flashed with Raspberry Pi OS, a official Raspberry Pi 4 official power supply, three jumper wires that are male to female, and naturally a Raspberry Pi. Here I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, but any Raspberry Pi microprocessor will work perfectly. Connect to a ground pin the Raspberry Pi to the ground wire on the small servo. Black wire to the dark brown black wire most commonly seen on small servos. Then connect the 5 volt power, usually a red wire, to the 5 volt pin on the Raspberry Pi. For this example, I will be using the GPIO18, which is pin number 12, as the data pin telling the small servo the direction and angle to turn to. The data wire on a servo is usually an orange or white colored wire. You're also going to insert the micro SD card to the Raspberry Pi. And with that, everything is all connected up. Now let's get the code into the Raspberry Pi running. Open up a Python interface like Thonny and copy and paste the following code into it. You can find this exact code in the article page linked down below. So let's save and run that code using the buttons here. And with that, you'll probably be able to hear and see the servo is moving straight away. So there you have it, running just how it should. So quickly looking at the code. The code starts by importing from a library called GPIO0, a feature called Angular Servo. Next line imports sleep. Then we create a variable called servo and give it details. We state that the data pin will be GPIO18 and decide the min and max pulse width. Servo control here is done by sending the servo a pulse width modulation, a PWM signal. This is a series of repeating pulses of variable width where the width of the pulse decides the angle of the servo arm. Different servos expect different PWM lengths. So if you do not get full rotation straight away out of your 180 degree servo, adjust the min pulse width and max pulse width values by 0.0001 and do it by increments until you do get that full rotation. If you have full rotation on your servo and hear no gear straining, you have found the best values. As each servo has unique PWM specifications, another way of learning this value can come from the data sheet and often at the bottom of our product pages. Back to the code. It then sets up an endless loop using a while true statement. In this loop, the servo will go from the min angle to the mid angle to the max angle with two seconds pause between each movement. The angle is decided by degrees and this is gonna do that forever. Feel free to alter this code as this is where the real creativity can occur the servo could actuate for any reason, you just need to code it in. So with this now working, let's move on to the second part of this guide and run this larger servo. Everything on the table is what you need to run this large servo. This servo in particular is a DF Robot metal geared 15 kilogram servo that can turn 270 degrees. You're also gonna need a five volt DC four amp power supply, a DC power jack adapter, jumper cables, male to female and male to male, and a small screwdriver, a Raspberry Pi power supply, and naturally a Raspberry Pi and a micro SD card with Raspberry Pi OS flash to it. You're gonna connect the ground pin of the Raspberry Pi to the ground wire on the small servo. Black 
wire to the dark brown black wire most commonly seen on big servos by connecting the two black wires to the DC power jack. This will attach the ground to the power supply as well. Then connect the power wire of the large servo, commonly a red or dark brown color, to the five volts of the external DC power supply. To send the data signal, I will use again the GPIO18, which is pin number 12 as the data pin, telling the servo the direction and angle to turn to. On a servo, this is usually an orange or white colored wire. And with that, everything is all connected up for the larger servo. Now, before we add power to the system by connecting up the two power supplies, let's get the code into the Raspberry Pi running for the large servo. Open up the Python interpreter and copy and paste the code for the large servo, which you can find in the article page. I'm gonna scroll down here and do it for you right now. Save that file and start the code running by pressing this button. Then, once I connect the DC power jack to power, we're gonna see the servo has come alive. And here it is running, nice. So let's take a quick look at this code. And the first thing you're gonna note is that it's very similar to how it was before. Where this code is different is in dealing with the servo's unusual higher range of movement. It's 270 degrees. So we can adjust for this in the line where we created the variable called servo and give it a detail using min angle and max angle. Then with those increased angles added, the code in the endless loop is also adjusted to accommodate this. Also, the min and max pulse widths are different for this servo. You can find a good pulse range for this servo by checking out the data sheet and then adjusting the values until full range of motion is achieved. You're gonna to have to divide those numbers found in the data sheet by 1 million to get the right size for the code. So there you go. If you wanted to use only one power plug for this setup, you can always incorporate a two-way 2.1 millimeter DC barrel jack splitter and a DC to USB type C adapter. You would attach that barrel jack splitter to the DC power supply then have one end power the Raspberry Pi through the USB-C and have the other side power the servo. You have everything you need now to control large and small servos directly from a Raspberry Pi. In this tutorial, I use these two servos, but you can find other great servos. You can find ones that rotate 300 degrees and ones that even have internal clutches, which will save the gears if the servo is ever overloaded. So with this servo twisting away and hopefully some ideas brewing, until next time, stay cozy. Oh, 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 oh,